Hello world! In today's video, we are going to look at the different filter policies which are associated with different states of link layer. Now, I've already made a video which explains the meaning of filter accept list or white list in BLE and the link to that will be in the description below. So make sure you've checked that one out first. And in this one, we'll simply have a look at the advertiser filter policy, scanner filter policy and initiator filter policy. And in the end, I have also covered an example which explains the importance of whitelist or filter accept list in BLE devices. The advertising filter policy determines how the advertiser processes scan and connection requests. The policy can be implemented in one mode out of the four available. Host configures the mode. Using the first mode, the link layer processes scan and connection requests from all devices. The whitelist is not in use in this case, and this is the default mode on reset. In second mode, connection requests from all devices are processed, but scan requests are processed only for the devices that are present in the whitelist. There is another mode which works exactly opposite to the previous one. Using the last one, both the connection and scan requests are processed only for the devices that are present in the whitelist. Also, this policy is ignored in case of following directed advertisements. The advertiser in such cases accepts scan or connect requests only from the device which it addresses in the advertising events. So clearly there is no use of this policy. Next is the scanner policy. It determines how the scanner's link layer processes the advertising and scan response PDUs. Two modes are available for use in this case. First is unfiltered, wherein all the advertising and scan response PDUs are processed, which means the whitelist is not in use. Again, this is the default mode on reset. Then there is filtered mode, and in this case, the whitelist is in use. In both the modes, a directed advertising PDU is ignored unless it contains the scanner's device address or it contains a resolvable private address. In this case, the address is resolved before making a decision of accepting or discarding it. Last is the initiator filter policy. This one takes care of the processing of the advertising PDUs. In first mode, the link layer ignores the whitelist and processes connectable advertising PDUs from a device which is specified by the host. In another mode, the link layer processes connectable advertising PDUs from all the devices that are present in the whitelist. If the link layer receives a connectable directed advertising PDU from an advertiser which isn't a part of whitelist or the device specified by the host, then such a PDU is ignored. Only one mode is supported for each of the policies. So to conclude, you may use the whitelist when you want to minimize the interaction of your device with other BLE devices. An example of this could be say, you want to connect with one of the devices from a whitelist, assuming that say each of the devices are providing similar data, say temperature data. In that case, the controller will connect with the first available device without bothering the host layer. The host in this case continues to be in the low power mode until the controller successfully establishes a connection with one of the available devices. So that is it for today. Remember to like and share the video and do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye world.